face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up guys and welcome to another how to use video which is really of course the scavenger and today we're doing something different and something I may or may not get right I'm actually doing how to use Vika Vault in of course generation 7 as I'm making this video, the game has yet to be released, so it's going to be with of course a few speculations and just overall a battle analysis of, of course of Vikavol's overall functions. And the reason I'm doing this is absolutely because I really love Vikavol for this generation, I think it's one of the most intriguing designs ever, so seeing this Pokemon being released with the full movesets um, definitely had me thinking on how to use it because it's not what I was hoping for, which is basically a more offensive Galvantula, no, it's much much more complex, and complex doesn't necessarily mean good, but there are building stones here to use, so with that said, let's go over how Vikavolt will be functioning in this future meta. So what should come to mind of course, Vikavolt's typing, bug electric leaves it resisting to electric finding, grass and steel, as you guys can see on my flawless editing, as looks pretty shitty. But yeah, it actually looks quite alright, and it's only weak to fire and rock, which are fairly common, definitely, but at the same time, it does have defensive capabilities to keep itself afloat. And what I mean by defensive capabilities? Well, first of all, we have Levitate, and that is the only ability it gets for this generation, as it had a decent HP stat of 77, and its attack is 70, defense 90, special attack a whooping 145, Special Defense 75, which is not bad for, of course, a bug type. And then we have the speed, which basically have everybody wonder what went wrong. And uh, I agree. I would much rather have seen, oh, I don't know. I was going to say the speed and special attack switch, but that's definitely not it. But definitely feels like they're missed out on here. But at the same time, with, of course, in the mind of a resist that gets... Vikavolt has option to utilize itself with, and just a quick rundown here of what is worth mentioning is that Vikavolt has the defensives to keep itself afloat with these kind of resistances. So by default at least, Vikavolt does stand out to be a pretty prominent wall breaker, if anything 145 special attack is definitely enough to push back a lot of opponents, and of course with its kind of mixed defensive, it has, actually has a chance of keeping itself rather healthy, it does get, like I said, access to Roost, which is going to be an important move for it, but over that we're going to actually go over a bit of its TM list and of course what it learns naturally, and I'm only going to go over relevant moves, so I will be listing everything it learns, of course, on the screen right now. So alright, relevant move is of course that you get, of course, Thunderbolt, Air Slash, those definitely stands out for it. As other than that, it actually get a few niche moves for the Bug Bus, Sap Cannon, Agility. And then we have, of course, with TM List, Roost, as I already said. And, of course, better moves such as Energy Ball, for example. And it gets the ability of Flash Cannon and Volt Switch and Thunder Waves. It doesn't get U Turn, sadly. But it do have a few options to be, of course, utilized with. And its egg moves actually somewhat broader with Electroweb, Mudshot of all the things, which could be helpful for it. And of course, Endure, which of course you want to use a berry, that's the way to go about it. So with that said, we're actually going to of course go over a bit of a few sets that I've been thinking about or juggling about. First set, and pretty much the one I would use probably 90% of the time, is the Timid set. 4 HP, max special attack, max speed. You have to be timid even though you lose a massive damage output due to it, but hear me out on this because it's actually relevant. At level 50, you will be at 104 speed, which is not so much. It's relevant enough to beat 70 passive mods, if anything, but that's about it. That's the one that's relevant to target. But the reason you want to have all that speed is because if you use Thunder Wave or Agility, remember Thunder Wave works differently in this generation, you actually only forces you to lose 50% of your speed, and of course, not 75%. Which means that you now have enough speed to beat, of course, base 1 and 30 base mods, such as, of course, uh, unevolved uh, Mega Aerodactyl or even, of course, a Mega Lopani. And with that said, of course, the move pool you want to use is, of course, like a Thunderbolt, Bug Buds, definitely use the stab. And then it's all about whether or not you can deal with steel types or you know, any type that takes this on fairly well. Optimize for Hidden Power Ice or Energy Ball, you would be fine either way. 
together with the core's agility or T-Wave. Like I said there previously, agility might be overall the better move if you want to keep the offensive momentum going, but if you want to be a mod that can switch in and switch out, then T-Wave is the way to go. And like I said, fully speed is mainly there actually for you to be able to take on the faster mods because while you do have the bulk to take a hit or two, it's much much nicer to be able to keep attacking because if anything this guy can do, it is definitely hurt something with his massive special attack. The next set we're gonna look upon is actually the more defensive set, but while saying that, it actually is still rather offensive. Uh, the modern set is actually to hurt things a lot anyway and still keep coming. 122 HP to ensure that Stellarfrog is not pushing it in an area where it will fall easily. And of course, mixed defenses with 4 in each, basically to raise that a little bit. Fully special attack because we don't want to lose out on any damage out on put on Vika Vault. If we can survive a hit, then retaliation should be for dear life hurting the opposing Pokemon. And speed is 126, which is mainly actually focusing on actually punishing switch-ins which could possibly outspeed. Uh, we're actually just focusing on the Nida base Pokemon, we got to do, do actually need extra bulk to be able to ensure a few switch-ins, while you could go 186 to be able to outspeed 100 base mods such as Yurashi or Mew, I don't see the point of doing so after T-Boy, but if you so desire, then you can actually go 186 just to get that offensive momentum going. Though if you were to decide 100 base mon, remember that you lack now the defensive capability to take on probably more defensive mons that can take you on, such as the likes of Cresselia. The reason you want to have, of course, this kind of speed tier and HP stat is because you want to take a hit from the likes of Cresselia, T-Wave it, which actually ensures you that next turn you can roost up, actually go up against it fairly well one on one, and of course force it up with your bug bus without being whittled down, at least not as much as you would like to. So this speed tier definitely ensures that you have the defensive capabilities and are fast enough to actually recover yourself up against it because if this guy is doing something well, it, it's definitely using his resistance to its capability at fullest and of course with its few weaknesses you can definitely see when they are coming so this is by far the easiest set to use actually and I think this is gonna be the more prominent one to be used in singles mostly because it actually have a natural stamina to it and Vikavolt just does this well. With Thunderbolt and Bug Buzz as its main stabs, it should be able to do well, though you could optimize Bug Buzz for definitely something else like an Empower Ice or Air Slash. Depending on the situation, in League Play, I do believe this set does a lot more better because you can be more specific. But with that said, that is going to end, of course, a more defensive set. And like I said, you could go fully on defensive, but you really don't want to be slower than any 85 base speed mods. And I'm definitely optimizing for, of course, outspeeding 90 base mods just to ensure myself that even the Scarfer that is on 60 players have no chance against this set whatsoever. And the last set I'm gonna showcase is just a little footnote, it's basically do not use this set. It's a timid Scarf set, which I'm pretty sure most people try to capitalize on. Like I said, do not use this set, it is terrible. Due to its bad speed and not being able to capitalize on Thunder Wave and stuff like that, or agility, you will not be able to creep really thing stuff. At 104 plus, of course, your base speed, you will be able to deal with base 90 mons and you will tie with them, you will not be able to outspeed them, which basically means it's a blind gamble where you can be locked and you're already, already slow enough to actually be outpaced or even outmaneuvered by other Pokemon. So trust me when I say this, Scuff is not a good set to go with, even though it is a Volt Switcher, it is not a very good one. Do avoid these of all costs. So alright, that is actually pretty much the video. And if you have anything you have seen in Vika Vault and want to ensure when actually of course me looking at, ensure of course write that down below. And I actually hope you enjoyed this video. Vika Vault, like I said, there is while I'm making this video not a part of the meta, so right now the game has yet to be released. So the information I'm using is what is available to me, and I can already see Vika Vault functioning fairly well in some situation. But it's clear that I have other functions that has yet to be discovered and therefore this video is mainly a test. So thank you of course so much for watching guys and like I said if you enjoyed this make sure to leave a like. And I see you guys of course in the next video. Until then, take care.